Hello fellow booknists, this is Gabby and today we're talking about all the books I read in December 2021. So hello everyone, my name's Gabby and welcome to the new year. I thought what better way to celebrate than dwell on the past. Okay, there's not gonna be any dwelling, but we are gonna talk about all the books I read in December and it was a good month. I read 12 books, which brought my overall total to 120 and uh, additionally, that was like the best, well, it was second best or like tied for the best month reading month for the whole year. So that was a really nice surprise and I really got to read a lot of random books that have been on my radar for ages and just finally now I'm able to get to them because I read all of my required reading really early and by that I mean like books for videos and stuff. I read it really early and I had half a month to just read whatever I desired and I also decided to catch up on some Ned Galley arcs. So check out the timestamps if you're interested in any of the specific books, but let's just kick off. So the first book I read in December was The City Beautiful by Aiden Polidoros. So this book is a historical fantasy, oh am I even, is it a fantasy? Uh, paranormal historical fiction book set in I think like the 50s or something in Chicago and we follow a gay uh, Jewish boy who's an immigrant and he's trying to get his family to the US as well. However, one of his um, housemates dies and that leads him on to an investigation of what happened uh, to his housemate as well as other Jewish boys who have been disappearing for a while now. So I read this book for a video. So this was a video where I read my most anticipated new releases of 2021. So these are books I didn't get to through the year, but I really, really wanted to read before 2022 came. And I got to this one and I ended up really enjoying it. I thought it was well written. It told a very compelling stories. I really liked the character and I like how the mystery was woven and I really liked the setting and all the exploration that came with it. Unfortunately, it wasn't a new favorite like I thought it might be. I heard so many good things and I would totally still recommend it and say it was a really good book. It just didn't blow me away per se. So I ended up giving it 3.5 stars, but I would wholeheartedly still uh, recommend it. And I think the audio book was really good if you're interested in that it's on script and overall it was a really good time I enjoyed it but unfortunately I thought it like properly you know blow me away and it, it was good but maybe not blow me away good next book I read was The Midnight Girls by Alicia Yasinska so this book is a high a little bit historical alternate history fantasy and in it we follow three girls who are the adopted daughters of witches and their monsters and they do the witches bidding and they have a competition of who can get to the most hearts and steal the heart of this prince that's like very pure hearted because if the witches consume their hearts that gives them immense power. So we have Marinka, Zosia, there's a Suffolk romance and I read an arc of this book so I think it just came out in the US this past week and I'm not sure when it's coming out in the UK but I was blown away. It was such a good story. So what initially really attracted me to this book is that the author is of Polish descent and uh, she lives in Australia but the world is inspired by Polish mythology and Polish history Um, so it's kind of alternate history of Poland and I love that. I really love all the references, the world building, I love the history, the the, the magic. I do say that a lot of it was very light touch when it came to world building. A lot of it was just never explained and you just kind of go with it. Uh, but this, despite that, I still really, really loved it and I thought it was executed very well and I would really recommend it. I have a whole dedicated review if you wanted to check it out when I go really in depth into what I loved, what didn't work for me so well. But I ended up giving it five stars and I would really, really recommend it if you want a really good sapphic story. It's Rivals to Lovers. I mean, it just all worked so well and I'm definitely, definitely following the offer to check out what else she comes up with because this was awesome and I want to support more Polish authors. Next I read A Wrath by John Gwynn and I left my copy in Poland and didn't realize 
I have this video to make. <laughs> but yeah, I read Wrath by Zhang Gwen, which is the last book in the Faithful and the Fallen series. So if you don't know, I've been uh, co-hosting a read-along for this series, along with uh, my awesome read-along group called Read Along Queens. We have a new read-along coming up, actually, so... Uh, announcement video just came out about that but this was the last book in the previous read-along Faithful and the Fallen like I said I really enjoyed it I thought it was a return to form after the slow slog that I thought the third book was I still think the first one was my favorite but it was a really good solid uh, conclusion that I had a lot of fun with so I would really recommend this if you're a fan of high fantasy you love like a lot of fight scenes and you really love the warrior honor that kind of vibe like if you like that I think you would love this book um I don't dislike it but it, it was a lot so I enjoyed it but um it's a very specific type of fantasy that, that you would prefer. And I ended up giving it four stars. Next up, I read Wicked Souls by Katie Wismer, which is book two in the Marionette series. I think uh, Katie Wismer is a self-published author um, and this is a sequel that just came out and I really liked the first book, but I was really surprised because I feel like Wicked Souls is what like not way better but like better and it was really really engaging so in this we follow Valerie who's a witch and she goes to this specific academy for witches who want to become like a very very renowned type of um guardian or bodyguard for the vampires who are ruling the world I enjoyed the first book but I thought this one was just like so good it got spicier so there's a really really good cool romance that finally got to shine because the first book was kind of not about that we got inklings but this is where it really developed the magic system the world it all expanded and grew and I was really impressed I had a great time reading this book so I would really recommend it if you've been thinking about whether you should read this series definitely do even if the first book you thought was just all right maybe give a second one a chance because I thought it was even better maybe not even writing because writing was really good in the first book more like the story is like really getting going now and the author likes ending on cliff hangers so this one was no different uh but i really really loved it i think i gave it five stars yeah i did i gave it five stars it was really really solid paranormal romance i know it's on kindle unlimited if that's something you have and if not it's not too expensive to buy um just on amazon i had the ebook but they are, there's also a physical copy i love this author she has a youtube channel and like a booktube slash author tube channel and i love watching her videos been watching her for years so it's really good to see that this uh, series has been uh, received so positively by other readers as well and i cannot say a bad thing about it. I think it was done very well, very impressed. So Wicked Souls is a solid sequel, really good. Next up, I read Yellow Jessamine by Caitlin Starling. So this book is like a short story novella I'm not sure uh, but it's kind of like horror gothic. We follow this really spooky town uh, there's like a coastal town and the main character is a widow or like not even a widow I think her whole family died and she's a trader and like a sailor and stuff and there's weird things start happening with people who suffer from this mysterious illness that they believe uh, was brought on the main character's ship. So this is another Caitlin Starling, Caitlin Starling which is the author of Jane the Death of Jane Lawrence which I really liked that book um but similar to this one I thought it started really really strong and then kind of fell apart as we went and again the same happened here I feel like the beginning was super spooky really cool really weird uh really intriguing um but then as we went on it was just weird shit happens and and you either like it or you don't it really reminded me of Horrid which by Katrina Leno which I actually really liked um but at the end it gave me similar vibes and although I really liked it in Horrid here I wasn't convinced I just feel like maybe it needed to be longer maybe it needed to like flesh out the story and the characters a little bit more but personally I was just a little bit underwhelmed so I actually got an arc for this book way back when before the death of Jane Lawrence came out so I just got it because it was my phase of I'm just getting all the next galley arcs and now I'm paying for it uh, <laughs> so I decided to read some arcs and they, they actually had a audiobook on script so I decided to 
listen to the audiobook. Yeah, and it was just okay. I was fairly disappointed, uh, but I ended up giving it three stars, which is not a bad rating, but I just, I just, I just wanted to love something by the author, and I feel like I liked, I loved the first book's first half, but I wanted, like, a whole book, you know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to next releases by her, but I'm not quite there yet. Next up I read Verity by Colleen Hoover. So this book is a thriller slash mystery. We follow a, a thriller writer who gets um, employed to finish a series by a very famous author who had an accident and she is uh, paralyzed so she's not able to finish her own book. Well she's not only paralyzed, she's um, like not responsive and can't really interact with the world. I was really, really, really into it, especially for like the majority of the book. Again, the ending, I maybe lost a bit of momentum, I don't know. So I was actually scared reading this book. There was a scene at the end and I was a little, I felt really freaked out and I, I, knew, I knew something was coming that I just kind of put the book away, went to sleep because I didn't want to have nightmares. And then the next day it actually did end up happening what I thought would be hap what, what would have happened so I probably could have finished the book. It didn't end up being as scary as I thought it would be from what it was leading up to. Uh, so not just my expectations because I really didn't have any expectations. I've never read anything by Colin Hoover. I just you know, knew that Verity was considered a good thriller and I would agree with that. It is a good thriller. It's very well written, well paced, disturbing, like extremely disturbing. Um, there were definitely content warnings for like child abuse, I guess you can say, and abortion. So it was like disturbing, but I feel like I thought it would have gone even scarier. And then it was more, it was scary, but it was mostly psychological scary rather than um, physical scary, if that makes sense. Nothing overtly scary happened. I mean, a lot of scary things happened, but I thought the showdown would be more physical rather than psychological. I don't know why I expected that. Still, Verity, I thought it was a really good read. It had me at the edge of my seat, and if you're looking for a good thriller that's like quite disturbing, I would really recommend it. I gave it 3.5 stars, but I had a very good time reading it because I thought, found it really engaging. Now a bit of a lighter note, I read Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hilbert which is book number two in the in the Brown Sister series, uh, which is a contemporary romance series about the Brown sisters finding love. So in this one, we follow Danny Brown, who is a scientist, a career woman, and she doesn't believe in relationships, doesn't want to commit. Um, but one day she gets into a fake relationship with a friend from work, Zafir, who is a security guard in order to support his um, charity that helps young football players with their mental health. I love this book. It was adorable. It was steamy. It was just so cute. And I really love how all Talia Hilbert books have very complex characters. So the, well, Talia Hilbert's black, so the character of Danny is also black. And then Zafir is of Middle Eastern descent, I believe. Each of them struggles with their own things. Um, Zafir's have really has really bad PTSD and uh, used to struggle with depression and I really loved how those voices were put in this really really sweet romance novel and how the characters work through it so yeah I really love how that is tackled and those voices are heard in such a seemingly unconventional way because it's not like a hard-hitting contemporary it's a romance novel but it just hits different i love it and i think all of talia hilbert books at least in the brown series are kind of like that so i love seeing it and i gave it five stars i think i'm pretty sure i did yes i did next book i read was a deal with the elf king by elise kova so this book is another romance but th this time it's kind of fantasy romance so we follow a girl who lives in the small town on the edge of the fairyland or fairyland, elf land, I don't know, the magical land. And every 10 years, I think, no, every 100 years? That's a good question. I don't know, many, many, every many, so every every 100 years, I believe, there is a, um, oh, 20? I don't know. Why am I struggling so much? I don't know. Every X many years, uh, the elf king comes and chooses the human queen and it's always someone with magical powers and the elf human queen has to go to the elf kingdom um but now the land is suffering because the elf king has not el because the human queen has not been found and turns out it's the main character 
surprise, surprise. So she has to go into the elf realm. I like this. Also, again, not a fair criticism, but I did realize it was kind of like a clean romance. There's like a lot, tiny little bit of, I would not even call it smart. That the, it's, a, it's not a bad thing. I just wanted a smarty book. So, so you know, it was a bit disappointing. Uh, overall, I thought it was okay. The romance was kind of cute. I'm just struggling to remember what I even thought about it. I like the characters. I like that it all had a bigger message and, and what that message was of kind of independence and following yourself and how you can't really choose if you're coerced into something. It's just, it was interesting. I liked it, um, but I definitely didn't tug on my heart strings as much. And I was disappointed because I thought it was a smarty romance because the way people were talking about it, I thought it was. But overall, it was alright. I gave it 3.5 stars and I would recommend if you want like a cute, romance that's like doesn't want too much from you not if you want a smart fest though definitely not next up i read the four profound weaves by rm lemberg so this book is a high fantasy novella in the birdverse universe i don't even know what that means i got this book way back when maybe like two years ago on net galley and you know i'm on my net galley i'm trying to so i was like 50 percent response rate and now 75 so i read five arcs this month so that was good um and that was one of the arcs and I realized the script has the audiobook so I was like let me get through it it's pretty short what really appealed to me was that it was about two transgender characters but in this world you can remake your body the way you want with help of these weaves so you can weave from song death sound and something else I found the book to be incredibly confusing I don't even understand what, how it can be a debut but part of a series is birdverse like a, a a series that everyone can contribute to? Maybe. I really don't know and I probably should know this but I didn't care that much. The story itself was all right. I enjoyed how transgenderness, transgenderness? I don't know how the concept of being transgender was introduced into this world. That was really fascinating because some some uh, people were fine with it, some weren't, and like obviously the weaves were kind of like a surgery or, or something, as in like a metaphor for it, that's what I'm trying to say. It was fascinating and I enjoyed that side of the conversation, but it took me such a long time to even realize that the two there were two main characters. I was so confused, so I listened to the audiobook and the audiobook narrator was the same for both of the characters, which I guess fine, you need to save money. The narrator made absolutely no effort into distinguishing them between themselves. So he just said their name at the beginning, but it didn't even register with me at first. It took me a long time. And then, then the main character was like under two different names. So it got, really got me confused because it, I don't know, it was very confusing. Um, so it took me a very long time to realize there were two characters. And I was like, this makes no sense. I was just there like, I don't understand what's happening. The only logical explanation is there are two POVs, but nothing indicates that. And then I really listened properly and the off the, the audiobook narrator did say the name at the beginning. Uh, but I just found it very confusing. The story itself is just like, I don't under, I didn't understand what was happening. It's just like I didn't understand what this book even was in terms of its like belonging. It wasn't terrible. If you're interested, if it sounds interesting to you, maybe you'll enjoy it. But I gave it 2.5 stars because I was struggling to get through it um, because I just didn't know what was happening, kind of didn't care either. So it was a rough one. Next book I read was A Familiar Sight by Brianna Labuskis. So this book is a mystery thriller. We follow a woman who's a sociopath, um, who's also a... Um, uh, consultant to the police and she when they found her finds her friend dead and her friend uh, kind of asks her to look into a case for her um a case where a young girl was found to have murdered her mother and the young girl was a psychopath so and then she's tried to, trying to i don't know why i'm struggling so much and then she's trying to uh, help the police solve this case so i first heard about this book from anna Anna, Alexa Dawn, who's an author but also booktuber, and she talked about this being one of her top favorite thrillers of the year, so I decided to check it out and I didn't really have any other reading plans, and I really did enjoy it. I thought it was well written and I really found the mystery compelling. I'm a big fan of like mis murder mystery detective stories. I love Bones, I love any 
shall wear a civilian but there's something weird about them teams up with a police detective and they solve crimes like i just really like that like sherlock holmes all of that i enjoyed but i am a bit concerned whether i'm the best person to judge the the the, the portrayal of psychopathy and sociopathy so the main character despite being a sociopath herself is extremely harsh on being a psychopath and she kind of paints it like she's not a killer but she could be but she's not because she's a sociopath but if you're a psychopath then you're definitely gonna murder someone in your lifetime that's kind of how they were looking at this girl and they did say that she was like not masochistic but you know, sadistic so she was a sadistic psychopath but it was kind of like yeah if you're a psychopath you're gonna murder someone and there, there's psychopaths that are not violent and I didn't feel like the conversation was very um, well nuanced and I don't even know that much about it but it kind of jarred me how matter of fact it was presented and because the main character is a sociopath it was kind of presented as gospel like that was it gospel truth that's it I don't even know if being presented as a gospel is like being presented as a fact I don't know but it was present it was kind of non-challenged and I feel like maybe someone will think oh well but sociopath said that a psychopath is a killer so it must be a fact I don't feel enough work was put in into maybe having a bit of a nuanced conversation on why psychopaths, sociopaths and people with um, antisocial personality disorders might have stigma around them, why assuming that each of them is violent is wrong and harmful. There was really very little effort for this conversation and that kind of jarred me and I don't know I don't want to say this is harmful because maybe it's not and maybe if a person with an antisocial personality disorder saw this they would be like this is perfectly fine I don't know I'm just saying it made me question the intent because I don't know anything about the author I have no clue if they have any kind of personal experience with this I don't know I mean obviously it's just one book it's not like it's going to change everyone's mind anyway um but it's just personal responsibility of each work right to, to present an accurate portrayal when it's something so sensitive that putting aside again I did enjoy the actual story actual mystery was compelling I really liked how it resolved I liked the mystery of it I, there was a tool, dual POV which I thought worked as well and something I really enjoyed was the partner that the main character got paired up with so she does have some older male um, detective that she used to work with but now she's working with this new young woman and I love their dynamic together I feel like it's not often two women being put in this situation it's usually a man or in a woman and usually they get into a romance or it's two men um so it was really cool to see um, two women and they had a really great chemistry in terms of being partners together i could see them become lesbians but you know i don't know that but i could see it so i think i'm going to continue this series because i actually did have a good time reading this book and i give it four stars for a mystery itself i would really recommend uh like as a fan thriller i would recommend i'm not sure i would base your perception of psycho and sociopath based on this Next up I read Weep Woman Weep by Maria de Blaise. So this book was another arc that I got a while ago and it was really short, only 120 pages, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, so it's a gothic and it, we're set, it's set in this really small town and the main character believes in La Llorona. La Llorona is this ghost of a woman who drowned her children and now is out to get other women and drown them. And in this city the main character perceives it as if La Llorona takes women, drowns them and and then they come back weird and very religious and just devoid of life and the main character is really scared that will happen to her. I love this book, I thought it was brilliant, it was so beautiful, it's set in New Mexico, it was just so such a beautiful setting and it was re it was just so interesting in so many levels that I'm like losing my train of thought. Character work beautiful, it kind of weaved all this PTSD, anxiety, trauma into this beautiful story of coming into your own, growing up, coming of age and coming into your own and letting go of the trauma and in this character of La Llorona it was kind of like put all of the anxieties of the main character and how she felt living in this small conservative town and how she just grew into this beautiful beautiful woman who just knew her worth. I thought that was beautiful. Then it was really interesting to see conversation on kind of gentrification I guess you would describe it but it was 
good gentrification in a sense, or at least it was presented in the book as a positive thing, changing commuting, improving community, giving people new limits on their dreams, new benchmarks for what they could want for themselves. I thought it was a beautiful story. It just warmed my heart, made me feel like I could do anything, and it was it was just mind-blowingly beautiful and I was not even expecting to love it as much as I did and I love the magical realism or like fabulism elements in it it was really brilliantly done safe to say I gave it five stars and I was so happy I picked up this random arc so good I wish I wish I read it when I actually came out I think it came out now but it was a beautiful story and the last book, 12th book I read in December was Furia by Shamil Said Mendez. And this one is a another arc I got and it's a contemporary and I started listening to it, right? And turns out it's about a footballera, which is a female football player and the main character loves football so it's set in Argentina main character is I think about 17 years old and she really wants to be a football player but being a fo female football player was like outlawed a couple years back in the story um in Argentina so even now that it's legal it's um still very controversial and not that much money can be made from it and her family doesn't approve um her brother is actually a uh, up-and-coming footballer himself and her dreams are kind of put on the back burner and she had a thing for her her his her brother's best friend called Diego who became very fam famous went to play for Juventus in Italy and um, now is coming back for a holiday and I was like oh my god did I just pick up a book about football Lord gave me a break <laughs> why did I do this to myself and then I fell in love the way this book it just oozes passion it's beautiful the main character is just so passionate about football it doesn't matter i don't care it's not about football it's about passion following your dream never giving up never giving in and standing your ground and coming from nothing into something and it was beautiful the way the offer made me care about this football era it was beautiful and then i loved how it touched upon the issue of uh, girls and women being murdered, being disappearing and how that's an epidemic and how people have different attitudes towards it and how some people just say, oh, she was with the wrong crowd, a 12 year old girl that got went missing, you know, it's just, it's disgusting, but it, it happens and it's important to be aware of it. And I loved how the book took that conversation and really delved deep and really gave us the strong girl who really cares about other girls and it wasn't about the missing girls it wasn't like some kind of high stakes rescue story but it was beautiful because we saw this woman who this girl who came from this really rough background and never gave up on herself and her dreams and it was beautiful to see i gave it five stars i thought it was done beautifully really enjoyed the audiobook as well the uh narrator did a really good job that, that made it was pretty good at reading month i mean i got one two three four five 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 stars 12 books read what a way to finish a year i was so happy to have made it and it was a really good reading month i think sometimes it's nice to just read something random that i have no plans for a video but at the same time then i was like i wish i was making a vlog for this because i want to talk your ear off about how much i love these books this month was all about getting my net galley score up and i am at 70 percent so i'm pretty happy with myself i'm gonna keep reading until i'm at that sweet 80 percent which is the recommended one apparently uh because there's so many arcs i want but let me know what you read in December. How was your reading year? Was December a good month? Did you just give up? That's okay if you did. January is a new month and we can make it happen. Or maybe you smashed it in December because you were chasing after that goal of yours. I don't know. I hope it was a good time, whatever the case. And thank you so much for watching. If you could comment, like, and subscribe, I'd really, really appreciate it. It really helps me out. But that's it from me. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.